so it is even more easier than uh, C okay question PHP uh, since I know PHP I am doing this if you are uh, interested in Python you can do in Python as well okay so rest of the code is almost the same you have this infinite while loop and we end this with this uh, question you know angle bracket so you can see there this is all the code is actually there's nothing to change and the php is more more or less it looks similar to you know c code okay so let me just indent this okay and uh, we can uh, you know test it out okay so what we do is we can just do this and we don't need to compile because it's a scripting language okay so php minus f dot slash led dot php dot php so hopefully it should work see you can uh, see there it is blinking once again okay and uh, let me just zoom and show you see it is blinking like this see how easy we can access with any language so language doesn't make any sense because it is the kernel is doing all that you know stuff with the gpio drivers so we can go back the advantage of php is unlike uh, see it is quite easy to make it much cleaner okay see i can go here uh, i can uh, set to two states so i can uh, define a variable uh, dollar on uh, equal to or maybe like the state uh, state underscore on is one okay dollar state of equal to zero like this there is no hash define uh, kind of stuff uh, in php so or maybe it is there i'm not sure but i generally use with variables like this okay and moreover this whole uh, command as well we can uh, you know uh, we can abstract in a api okay see it is quite easy function uh, uh, you know uh, we can uh, tell a function uh, uh, set you know gpio see you can call anything like this and you can uh, mention state and uh, say for instance you want to pass also pin number or something okay so pin comma or pin underscore number state see you can write your own api see even the same you can try with the c as well okay but it is quite easy in php hence for the demo uh, purpose i am showing in php see you do copy paste of this uh, system and it is uh, like this and uh, see state we can replace that with the state unlike see you don't need to do any printf and then uh, format specifiers and stuff like that it is quite straightforward in the case of php so let's comment uh, this line it's again you can do double slash or else you can do c like commenting or you can do even hash as well so it should work as a comment okay so let me just comment it and uh, you can pass this uh, pin value uh, dynamically okay so perhaps we can just do like this so we can do a concatenation of two strings and a dollar pin underscore number so you can see there now it is completely dynamic this api uh, let me all push it in single line usually i like in this coding <laughs> you know standard so which is uh, my way of doing things so let's just do this uh, let's just delete this and uh, let's set this via in you know decent looking api okay so we go here set underscore gpio and then we need a pin uh, is a pin number 11 and then we can set the state is a state underscore on of course you can mention as a zero one here as well but uh, you know it looks much you know cleaner uh, when you write a code like that okay you can also mention here uh, set uh, a gpio 11 state of okay see you can do this way see the point is not about learning php code the point is how quickly you can port it to a different language okay so although you may never have done php but i'm just giving an example so we can run once again and we can see whether it works okay yeah it is not working uh, let me just debug uh, yes again it is missing this redirect so let me just do this redirect so state redirect to that file which is dynamically you know the string is created okay so we can try this and you can see there again it is working as expected see hope you can see there okay
So this is the advantage you get when you access, uh, you know, a sort of, you know, raw level access and uh, when you understand how the actual uh, drivers and the kernel level things work, okay. So whatever you do in any language, it doesn't matter, it's the kernel, it, it's what it matters. Uh, you know, uh, you can do in any language of your choice, it really doesn't matter, okay. It's actually entirely abstracted by the kernel. It's actually the kernel drivers are doing the actual thing. So below the drivers, you have of course the hardware layer. So, okay, you have the hardware. In that hardware, we have in this case, you know, GPIO, you know, pins, uh, you know, uh, which is actually supported by this uh, Broadcom, <laughs> you know, chip. You know which is the actual raspberry pi the main processor okay uh, chip or you know soc in pi so to conclude this video is for any budding uh, kernel developer if you want to become a kernel uh, programmer uh, this is a way you should start learning things okay this is the thing it shows a proof that kernel does the thing and it is all abstracted no matter which language you use uh, some will quarrel c++ is better than c some will say c is better than c uh, i mean c++ some will you know say that java is highly portable and you know things like that but it is quite you know funny uh, the moment you work in uh, low level uh, you know systems uh, you know software development like in the kernel space the moment you work in kernel space you know the drama what happens these things are happened in kernel space uh, and um, any any you know hardware devices are you know controlled by the kernel drivers in this case like this so when you do anything like this it is actually the drivers which is doing that and in this case uh, even if you access with uh, any C APIs like they have you know put forward in this uh, code yeah in this case uh, say for instance this is with python uh, see there they are doing this GPIO output and then pin number and the GPIO high and stuff like that and in my case as you have seen I have done my own APIs in PHP uh, you know something like this it really doesn't matter so and in the end if you go in depth if you even download and have a look at their code as well most probably they will be doing the low level stuff like that and even here we can extend this and we can start doing that port initialization and instantiation and uh, stuff like that see whatever i did here uh, before that uh, this uh, you know port creation okay you can see the echo 11 export even these things you can abstract and you can create apis to do that okay of course you you know similar thing you do with you know uh, this thing uh, okay you can see their setup and this eight and initial value they are you know initializing okay so same thing you can even create such apis and then you can expose so you can write your own libraries and all these things it doesn't matter because in the low level it's actually whatever the kernel is providing those things it matters okay so in the case of gpio instead of proc or instead of iocTL, it is providing access with a sysfs file system i'm not sure if it is only sysfs or if it is also going to offer in gp uh, you know in uh, this optional other uh, in, in, interfaces as well like this uh, proc or uh, you know iocTL uh, you know apis so if you are interested okay i highly recommend what you can do is uh, go to this raspberry pi uh, kernel compilation see there is a, a you know public link official link from the raspberry pi dot org uh, you can go there and you can go and pull the kernel sources here see next get the sources and it will take time yes this is going to take time around 20 minutes or more than that okay depending on their speed not your connection speed so depending on their server speed and stuff so if you clone this you will get the entire uh, kernel source of the raspberry pi ported kernel see this is different than vanilla kernel what you get it in you know this uh, kernel.org <laughs> okay so you will get a kernel source okay which has been taken by raspberry pi team or uh, the guys who are uh, doing this raspbian uh, i'm not sure i think this is but i think this is a standard uh, uh, you know kernel uh, picked by raspberry pi team itself Okay, so you will get the kernel source and you can, uh, you know, go through and then you can have a look at their uh, GPIO drivers. 
so you can see there you can also go through the sources you can of course go through through this uh, github repository you can see that this is the source and you can jump to this drivers and uh, you can navigate and find where this uh, gpio drivers are see this uh, gpio drivers and of course uh, this should contain the gpio drivers of raspberry pi uh, rather than some third party devices i i think so okay so you can see there uh, broadcom 70528 and in this case uh, this one is a pi 3 model b plus okay so this is um, 83780 or something bcm 283780 okay so that's the model uh, if you find you should able to find the drivers as well so here you should navigate and you should uh, able to get this see i never navigated through these sources but you know once i have done and i i mean i have done long back i have not done quite recently okay so i have done long back and then i even uh, you know uh, did some architecture diagram so if you if i find it in the future perhaps i can uh, shoot an episode on this you know driver uh, thing as well okay so that how it is exposing it via csfs file system and stuff we can even walk through that code so hope you learned something interesting the end objective is not about turning on this led or off, you know turning off the led or blinking leds and stuff like that the end objective is to learn uh, the actual uh, you know uh, the big picture uh, this is what happens no matter whichever things you do in systems uh, when it uh, has an i mean when it comes to a system which has an operating system the reason i'm saying this is i do have recently many students who are uh, from ec or triple e background but they are working on uh, operating systems and uh, you know things like that or else uh, low level embedded system development and uh, uh, os porting and uh, you know kernel optimization and stuff like that but unfortunately they never been exposed to the operating system in the past and they never have any much clue about how, what an operating system is see which is why i'm saying all those abstractions are provided uh, you know by those libraries it's just it's just a abstraction it's just a you know layer uh, which is abstracting that but if you see the end it is going to be these uh, drivers and these drivers are the ones which are interfacing with the hardware directly since we have an operating system this is what it happens but if you don't have an operating system you have like arduino or something like that a microcontroller then of course you will have some microcontroller uh, code micro code which takes care of those things manually okay uh, it will do a raw access maybe some address is linked to that port you will do a raw access to that address you set uh, the flag or you set the value of that bit then you know some gpio pin will be turned on or turned off and stuff like that in the case of a uh, thing like raspberry pi or such harm devices you have a full fledged cpu you have ram you have all the components of any system so in this case you have a you know full fledged operating system in this case since pi is running raspbian os it is a linux kernel since it's a linux kernel uh, you know you have different kernel interfaces like i mentioned so in the case of gpio drivers you are getting an access with sysfs file system to learn about the file systems you can uh, of course go through my uh, episodes uh, which i did in the past you can also go through links like this uh, you know wikipedia stuff and this uh, mainly this architecture and so this should give the you know complete big picture so hope you enjoyed the show if you have anything to discuss uh, be in touch uh, via mail or post your queries in youtube comments so thanks a lot for joining me stay tuned have a nice day. Bye-bye.